Well, good morning, magandang umaga, and welcome to today's episode of My PI Dream. Here in the backyard of Villa Feliz, another beautiful morning here uh, in the Philippines. Uh, and beautiful, the word maganda. Maganda, that's why it's beautiful morning, magandang umaga. Well, anyway, uh, we are not here for a lesson in uh, Tagalog because if we did, I would be failing all of you. But what we are here today to do is a catch up. You notice I haven't had a video posted in the last few days. And that's primarily because of you. <laughs> uh, because of your responses to the last episode that we did showing a couple of the model houses here. I am, uh, my inbox has been full. It's, it's full every morning uh, with inquiries about that and I've been passing that on to the, the realtor for the subdivision. So I have a feeling we're gonna have a, and they're not only looking at those model houses, they're also looking at lots around here. So for those of you who do end up getting a lot, congratulations and uh, uh, Howdy neighbor. <laughs> so anyway, today, like I said, is going to be a catch up episode. I've had some projects that I have been able to do some work on after I responded to all those emails and uh, inquiries. Uh, and I want to sit down today and do a Bahi Kubo time. Remember we used to do that a while back. Some things that are on my mind that I would like to share with you. And I think you're going to find today's Bahi Kubo time to be interesting. Well, that's a long enough intro. Let's get into today's episode. While we still have some beautiful sunlight here and the rain doesn't come down like it has been almost every day at specified times. So without further delay, let's get today's video underway. It's just amazing. Every morning I get up. It's actually later right now. It's probably around 9 o'clock in the morning. But normally I get up really early, around the crack of dawn. And then that's when the yard, you can really see a difference. When you first wake up in the morning, all the dew is still on the ground. And for us, we had a reasonable amount of rain yesterday and over the evening hours as well. And it makes everything so green. And you walk outside and it feels feels so good and it just smells so good out here. Uh, well anyway, what I want to do before we go into a Bahe Kubo time discussion today is I want to just kind of show you uh, over just the past few days because you who are following, you are who are following <laughs> the episode on a day-to-day -day basis when we upload videos, uh, you get to see the, the growth and you get to see the differences from one day to the next. And for those of you who are just tuning in for the very first time, uh, you may be establishing your point right now and maybe you'll come back later on or go back to an earlier video and you'll see how quick things change here in the Philippines because uh, growth of plants here, it's just amazing and it has to do with the climate. It has to do with the the soil here, the organic material inside the soil with the volcanic uh, materials that are inside there, the vegetation that's breaking down and adds to the complement of the soil. There's just so many things. Uh, things just grow great here. Uh, and it's kind of obvious if you just look over my shoulder. And what else grows is those weeds. You see the weeds across on the other side of the fence line. Everything just grows so well here. Well, I just want to start off today. The first thing I want to do, I want to walk over to the raised bed garden. Uh, uh, you saw in the intro video uh, that uh, everything is doing really well inside there. But also, I did some work yesterday. You remember uh, the little spray nozzle. I think it was three. Let me look if I could see. One, two, three. Oh, it's four. It's a little spray misting nozzle that I put, oh, a couple months ago. We did a little video uh, on the installation of that uh, to add a little bit of water, spraying very light water to the raised bed garden. Well, I put an order into Lazada, but with all the COVID-19 situation that's going on, orders were getting canceled, deliveries in delay, which is to be expected. 
but it came in it came in a couple of days ago so I installed the new mister and I want to show you the new mister that I have installed in the raised bed garden right here now, every gardener knows the key to success of growing fruits or vegetables inside your garden or your yard is having a few basic things that's good soil it is good nourishment in the way of water and fertilizer and it's also sunlight all of those little things put together will either make you uh, a very successful gardener if you don't have them uh, you'll have quite amount of failures which I've had in the past uh, but you can see we're doing really good right here uh, look at the look at the grapevine I showed you the other the other day we said I think we started tracking the vine when it was here then I showed you when it got over to here well I want I want you to see it's actually about to turn around we're all the way to the other side now and we're gonna be going back now uh, what we really are focusing on over here today is this is this irrigation system that I have it's this nice mister irrigation you see these the original one that I installed here that I showed you for a test base to see how it would work and I'm gonna to have to remove it here soon is this one it's in the little brown tubing here you see the brown tubing uh, I have four of these and they're very nice they're actually a finer mist than the one that I installed uh, that I received from Lazada and when I installed you can see all the heads here they're a little bit bigger of a nozzle uh, hole inside here and they spray a little bit more water I think they're something like 2.5 liters per hour per nozzle uh, I'm not sure the rating of the brown one over there uh, but it's much finer it's more of those like if you went to an amusement park and it just cools the environment but it also does a pretty good uh, or has done a pretty good job on watering the raised bed garden uh, so what I did it has a quick disconnect over here you can see it pops off let's see if I can pop it off okay oh ah. okay so it has a quick disconnect you can connect it back up but this isn't going to be hopefully what well, I got rained on yesterday so I just put it here real quickly it is supposed to connect to one of the free zones on our irrigation system over there I hope I hope I have enough of leftover line here to get it over to that and what I can do there I can either do it on my phone or I can do an Alexa command to tell it to go ahead and water the garden uh, at will when I need it done manually or I can set a schedule for it like I do the rest of the irrigation for the rest of the yard well anyway that's the new system here I'll go ahead and put it on I actually I did many more nozzles on here I can't remember what my number is let's kind of look one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve I have twelve I think I have twelve I think it's twelve nozzles on this one as opposed to the four before now when I turn on the the bib the water bib here this is what I get here now I'm not sure how good you can see it through the camera's eye view but it does a very nice pattern over the entire raised bed garden now the raised bed really doesn't need watering right now because we had lots of rain yesterday uh, but this is just for an example and it doesn't hurt it's not going to hurt to have uh, too much water right now it'll go away very quickly and it's a fine mist again so once I get it connected to the irrigation system over here to the automated irrigation system that's controlled by the Rachio uh, controller and the app uh, we'll be able to do it via remote through Wi-Fi over our phone or any computer inside the house or even uh, as part of our smart home we can use Alexa now let me go ahead and turn this off and again later on probably today I'll see if I have enough hose to reach to one of the uh, free zones that I have inside the irrigation system here for the yard now I showed in the intro this morning this plant when I was showing the different growth that we have in the yard, uh, different fruit bearing trees. Now this is the pow pow, you remember, the pow pow. It's doing great. I want you to see the bark on here. It's starting to get thicker. And I've already pulled off three blossoms that look like they were carrying fruit. And it looks like we have another blossom right here in between these leaves. I don't know if you can see it down inside there. It's way down there. 
uh, but we'll cut that if it looks like it's a fruit which I believe it is we'll go ahead and cut that off remember you want to cut off all your fruits for the first two to three years on any of your fruit bearing trees uh, to promote the growth like we did in our video on trimming and pruning now you remember it was about a, a week ago that we talked about the pruning and the tipping or the trimming of your of your citrus and your fruit bearing trees remember this this was our lemon we actually have two lemon trees here and then what we did is we were cutting off lots of these little growth actually we cut off all of these we had one main trunk and I'm just gonna pop these off with my finger because we don't want the energy to be focused here we want the energy to be focused on this plant now <laughs> Here we go again. Look at all, all the lemon. These are all lemon buds inside here. I'm gonna have to pop these off also. I don't want any fruit growing this year on, on this plant here. Now, as a result, I explained to you when you do the tipping, what will happen is you will get new growth. You see the new growth right here and the new growth right here. And this is what is going to develop the thickness of your, your tree. It will do a branching out at that and you can control uh, you can control the shape of your tree by doing proper pruning. I want to show you some other ones that we did and how quick we've gotten some responsiveness to. And here's another one of our, our citrus trees we have here. Remember, it was a dual branch. We had a second big branch that came out here. We chopped this off and we're still starting to get little pieces and I'll keep taking all of these off. We don't want any of these to take away energy. But I want you to see up at the top now. You see where we trimmed it here? We're getting new growth. It looked like I really killed this tree, but I really didn't. I'm actually making it stronger and all the new growth right here. As well as this one, this one had several growths on the bottom and we're starting to get the new growth up here and over here. Now this one over by this island, remember this is our island where I, I really put too much of the chicken, uh, the chicken manure and rice hulk uh, ratio. I did a little bit too much and I kind of burnt out a little bit of the strawberries here, but the strawberries are all, you see they're coming back in really good. Very healthy looking over there. And I added some of the Moses in the cradle as well from our planter uh, by the garage. But this one is the one, I'm not going to dig this up here, but underneath there is where I cut off a big section, a huge section of a Y where it wired off on the trunk very low, which we don't want. And I didn't have to tip this one because I like the shape with this one. But you can see all the new growth, all of this new growth that you see everywhere here. It wasn't doing that before until I cut the base, which was taking up all of the energy. And now the tree is starting to develop. <laughs> now this, we don't, we don't have big moles here. We got a lot of other things that we're going to talk about today. Uh, but we do have a dog named uh, Mary Ann and a dog named Hopone. I don't know whose signature this is. Uh, Mary Ann. Uh, makes nice smooth <laughs> holes to lay in for the coolness for the main digging like this one This is more this has more of the signature of Hopone where he buries his bones ah, uh, That's the consequence of having pups And before we retire over in the Bayakubo and have a little talk a little chat uh, I just want to show you this area right here. This is the third island uh, th That we did well, about a week ago uh, I made a mistake here. I added a little bit too much of the compost, uh, the, basically the cow manure and the rice hull over here with the mixture, not as, as far as ratio, but for buildup. I made this too high. I made it flat to where it goes over this area. Now, I didn't really think this out properly too well. We get some runoff from the roof up here, and when it rains hard, right in this corner over here, we get a lot of water. Well, when we had the the grass here, the bluegrass, it was tilted. The grade was tilted properly, so all the water came back here. We had no problem with it at that point. It kind of built up a little bit too much. What I was noticing, it was splattering on all of that. My grade wasn't that good, and I had a little bit of mud that went over the corner. I have to be careful with that because we have the basement, you know, and we want to make sure all grades are away from any of the walls of the basement. It never went down the stairs, so I didn't have a problem. Uh, and luckily that rain only lasted like about two hours and it was hard. Uh, so it wasn't a disaster, but it could have been messy. So we got really lucky there. So let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and walk over to the Bahe Kubo. Let's do a Bahe Kubo time.
All right, it's been a long time since we did a Bahi Kubo time, so it's a good opportunity for me to pass on some information to you uh, from my experience and some of my thoughts. This is a great thought sharing process here in the Bahi Kubo. Hey, hop on. You want to sit up here with me or are you cooler down there? Huh? You want to sit up here? Come on. Why don't you join me? Come on. Yep. Good boy. Join us. Join us for a little bit of today's <laughs> exchange of thoughts. Oh, are we having an exchange of thought? Oh. His exchange of thought is always, I'm hungry, feed me, all the time. Well, anyway, what I want to talk about, I just want to hit a few brief points. I, I was going to title today's episode, and I don't know if I will or not, uh, let's get something straight. Because what I want to do, I want to share with you uh, some of uh, the positive and the negative aspects about living and retiring inside the Philippines. Uh, there are some things that we don't really talk so much about, and these opportunities for us to chat we can share some of those views my views from my experiences over here anyway I want to talk about several things I constantly get write-ins on the channel uh, also emails people asking me specific things so we're gonna start there then we're gonna talk a little bit about some nuisances around here um, the first thing uh, land purchases purchases qualifications for expats I am always getting questions I am always getting questions about uh, I'm a foreigner can I buy property I want to live like you live inside the Philippines uh, which is pretty nice over here in the Philippines I got I got to tell you 365 days of beautiful weather when it's not raining uh, uh, <clears throat> and we're in rainy season right now but it's still beautiful even when it rains and it nourishes everything makes everything green as you've seen well let's get back to the question the question is uh, how can I as an expat uh, a foreigner buy property in the Philippines well except for a couple of real weird exceptions you can't you cannot buy property what most people do over here is they are either married to a Filipino or a former Filipino citizen and when I say former Filipino what I'm speaking of is somebody who left the Philippines and became a naturalized citizen in another country and they don't have a passport anymore from the Philippines uh, just like Ness. Ness is a US naturalized citizen so she is considered ballot buy-in so those former Filipinos considered to be ballot buy-ins they are still able eligible to purchase property here inside the Philippines so let's get back to the main issue you're a foreigner and you are looking to purchase property in the Philippines again foreigners cannot purchase property but if you are married to a Filipino or for former Filipino uh, former Filipino, a ballot buy-in, you can purchase property. Now there's a little restriction on the former Filipino ballot buy-in status, and I don't want to get too complicated, uh, and this is not a dual dual citizen status. This is only a foreign, uh, foreign passport, a foreign naturalized citizen from another country. They have a restriction where they can only purchase up to 1,000 square meters of property. Uh, so, Filipino citizen, Buy as much property as you want, former Filipino, up to a thousand square meters, dual citizenship, your Filipino status allows you to buy as much uh, property as that you want because you have not given up your Filipino uh, citizenship or passport. Now, what most people do, what most people do is they are, they're married to a Fil Filipino. Uh, then they are able to come over as a foreigner and do like what we did, get some type of retirement visa, whether it be a traditional, 13A, 13G, or for us, the SRV, which is a great program that we have videos for, and I'll put a link as well at the end of today's uh, video for getting the SRV. It's a special resident retiree visa. It's a, it's a great program. Well, anyway, uh, so that's how foreigners can live and retire a inside the, the, the Philippines. Now, there are there are exceptions to the rule. The way for, There are ways that foreigners can buy property inside the Philippines, but it mainly has to do with starting a corporation, a company, a business, and employing uh, and employing Filipinos. Uh, there's a lot of great information about that on the web. Uh, you can check on that. But it's mainly, mainly a way for uh, stimulation of foreign investment inside the Philippines. Okay, so we figured out how we can get now into the Philippines as a foreigner. Got to marry a Filipino, but not necessarily. <laughs> there are other things you can do, but you have to be very cautious. And you can actually lease, you can actually lease, which is not buying. You can lease property over here, uh, long-term lease. If you have a, a uh, some type of a visa that allows you to stay here, you can do long-term leases. 
but that's kind of risky because if you lease a property, say like for 25 years or 50 years and you build on that property, you know at some time you have to give up all of your property. It's going to go back to the country. Uh, also, they, uh, there's an opportunity. You could have somebody, you can under uh, a Filipino to purchase the property for you, but it's in their name and you can see where there's a lot of risk that's inherent in that type of of a contract so you have to be very careful with that as well some people do that but uh, the uh, the option for something going bad uh, is extremely high it's a high risk situation so I don't advise uh, uh, for s that type of an arrangement anyway that's enough for for that question that actually was really long so what I also want to talk about I got to go back out so long my my screensaver kicked in okay I'm back to my little handy dandy notes here let's talk about facts and acts of nature uh, nature. Uh, there, there, there are some net of negative aspects also uh, about the Philippines with regard to basically acts of God, acts of nature. And it has to do with things like uh, earthquakes, volcanoes, typhoons, which typhoons isn't really any different from hurricanes that we have. It's just a different name, hurricanes that we have in the U.S., North, uh, that part of North America or, or you know, Central America and around that area. So uh, these are things you have to think about when you're moving over here to the Philippines. We are fortunate uh, when we purchased our property, this part of the, the northern th three islands, the island of Luzon, in the province of Batangas, in the city of Lipa down here, we're kind of towards the west, which kind of protects us from the typhoons a little bit because as you know, most typhoons, if not all typhoons, normally start from the east, they work their way west, and kind of go north. They, they kind of have that kind of motion. Well, whenever they hit the east, the typhoons hit the east, they kind of break down a little bit. You know, when it goes landfall, it reduces the wind strength. And by the time it gets over here, if it gets over here to our area here in Lipa, uh, what happens is uh, they're usually a s very small category of wind or what they call a signal, a small signal, maybe a one or a two. And w most of the time, we don't even notice. A, a typhoon might go right through us, and we don't even notice why, you might ask, because we're kind of protected in between a couple of mountain ranges, Mount Malariat and Mount Mokolok. Uh, and we are in a plateau, plateau uh, in a valley, higher region, which, which uh, accounts for the very mild climate that we have here in Lipa, which is one of the most attractive things about building a home, a retirement home in here, because it's much cooler than the, to the north of us and to the south of us. North and south. Okay, anyway, enough about that. Oh, also, we live near a volcano, and I'll, I'll put a link at the end of today's, <laughs> today's episode about the volcano. Although we're 21 kilometers, and I think the big ring of all the danger is like 17 kilometers. Uh, from the eruption we had in January, I have some great videos on that. Please, if you have not watched that, you should watch that. It's it's like epic. The videos are epic. One of them, I think, went kind of, uh, kind of what I'm going to call kind of viral. Anyway, so uh, I'll put that at the end of today's episode. Security, security, security is always a concern. And it's not just a concern in the Philippines. It's a concern anywhere. Common sense approach to security should always be applied to wherever you are going to retire or reside. It does not matter. Common sense approach. Now, there, for me, I'm going to tell you, for me, there are some fallacies. There are some uh, rumors going out there uh, about the Philippines and the horrible thing with security. Now, I am sharing this from my experience, my experience here in this part of the Philippines, in this part of Batangas, in this part of Lipa. We are very, very fortunate. We have a great barangay that we're associated here. Uh, we have an, I'm, I'm going to call it a barangay with a conscience. Uh, so you do something wrong in our barangay and then everybody knows about it and you're shunned, you're shunned. And that's kind of the way the morals go over here inside the Philippines. But what you normally traditionally see, uh, a lot of the, the negative aspects about security in the Philippines, uh, my experience living here for three years, uh, I have not seen so much. And it could ha have to do with several, uh, several factors. And what could, one could be, and I, and I believe possible, has to do with the current administration uh, doing a much stricter uh, uh, concept of how to handle 
uh, violators. Uh, and, th and that's my opinion. So anyway, uh, so that has to do with security, but you always have to think about security. Now, in if you're building a house in a gated community, and I'm asked this question by subscribers all the time too, if you build in a gated community, uh, it's not that you need less security on your home, but there's an added layer of security that people do not have in the province or on the farms outside a gated community. And what is really the definition of a gated community? Well, a gated community is you have to go through a gate with guards, with security guards, and normally armed guards before you can enter. There are access points that are monitored. There's also normally some type of a peri perimeter wall, security wall, around the entire uh, community complex of the subdivision uh, that has layers of security built in, whether it's barbed wire on the top or something that uh, uh, is a uh, inhibitor or a something that motivates people not to try to penetrate and enter into a uh, that type of a community. So that's what they have inside gated communities. Again, uh, you also can do things, common sense approach, like we've done here at Villa Feliz, uh, things like CCTV, fences, dogs, alarms, uh, you can do things like that if you want to enhance your security. You always assess your security needs, use your common sense approach, and apply those common sense approaches to your security requirement. Okay, enough about security. Uh, I'm always asked, I'm always asked about what is your lot size? And I've said it, I, a hun I got a hundred times at least, and emails. Uh, a thousand, yeah, I will say a thousand emails. Our lot size here at Villa Feliz, when you see uh, the the drone shots and you can kind of get an idea uh, the uh, the size of our lot, we have 885 square meters. That is the size of our lot here at Villa Feliz. I wanted to talk a little bit about farm lot and people are writing in asking questions about um, zoning, zoning. Uh, this community we live in our subdivision uh, is zone farm lot. You basically have three, basically three types of zoning here in the Philippines and anywhere else in the world you have different type of zoning. Of course you have commercial, you have residential, and we have another thing uh, called farm lots, which is basically like uh, farming. And what that has to do with, it has to do with uh, you have to allocate a certain portion of your property, kind of like for zoning, and only a certain portion of your property uh, for your house footprint. So with regard to the qualification for farm lots, uh, it is your house cannot be more than 25% footprint and any buildings associated uh, with your house, a garage, a, a uh, maybe a concrete based workshop or something like that, uh, that cannot all together added together cannot exceed more than 25% or you do not qualify for the farm lot. And what's the good thing about the farm lot? There's a tax exclusion. Your taxes on your property are lower than a residential lot. Okay, so that's a uh, talking about farm lots. I get, I get questions about building approval process. If you have a, a property over here, uh, what do I have to do to build on my lot? Is it like my home in the US? Uh, do I have to get permits and everything like that? Well, yes, you do. It's almost the same. It is, it is so close, and I think it's probably based upon a lot of the uh, the rules and regulation uh, in North America. I think that's probably where they got a lot of their code. But you have to apply. You have to apply in the barangay for a um, a barangay. What do they call that? It, it's a building permit. Uh, oh. I had to think for a while. I totally forgot. It's called the Barangay Clearance, but it's basically a Barangay pro, uh, Permit. You have to get permits from your subdivision normally. Uh, you have to fulfill certain requirements and you submit your site development plan to some engineer and they will make sure that the building uh, is uh, applicable and does not break any of the rules inside the, the deeds of restriction. Then you also have to have government other than the barangay, the local government uh, permits as well. And that has to do with structural uh, engineer reviewing your site development plan or your blueprints. You have electrical engineers, sanitation engineers, and all of those. So that's part of the process. It's very similar uh, to what you would have in any Western country as well. Okay. 
Now the last thing I want to talk about today, uh, which actually stemmed what I wanted to have a Bahai Kubo time for, has to do with nuisances. Uh, there are news. Everything isn't great in the Philippines. Everything isn't perfect. This is not. Uh, this is not Nirvana here. Uh, but it can be your Nirvana uh, if uh, you do things correctly and you handle nuisances properly. And my biggest nuisance here is the pests. <laughs> when I say pests, I mean things like ants and, and uh, bugs and snakes and lizards and all these kind of things. But not, not our dogs. Our dogs are great pets over here. Uh, I'm, I want to show you today. There, it's crazy. It's crazy some of uh, the wildlife they have over here inside the Philippines. And I tried to capture a few images or a few videos and what I'll do, uh, I don't remember which ones I have, but I'm going to talk here and hopefully I go back and I look inside my archive of video and, and photos and I can place them inside here. One thing is ants. You've seen in previous videos, ants are pretty destructive around here. Ants and termites very destructive over here. Uh, you saw in my PLDT down episode, our internet, uh, that red ants, and they're huge. They are huge red ants. They made a nest inside our PLDT fiber uh, switch distribution system for the subdivision, and they ate up all the electronics inside it. They eat the, 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 the insulation off the wire they go, and they shorted everything out. And uh, we didn't have internet for quite a while as a result of that. You have ants that will get inside your house, and it's mainly it's mainly really small ant, ants. You know what? I don't know what they call it over here in the U.S. We call them army ants, in the army because they're they're like soldiers, they're soldier ants, and they're like following a line. What they do is they leave a scent behind them, uh, a trail, so that everybody can follow them. They know a trail. They get to a uh, they get to food wherever food is inside your house, whether it be a trash can or you left a, a grain of rice on the floor. And they find every crack and crevice over here. And I got to tell you, a lot of the builds in the Philippines, uh, the houses not, are not sealed. Even in a Western designed and a Western constructed type of a building, they're going to find their way inside your house. We, we all, we're always dealing with ants inside the house. Okay, the other thing I want to talk about is lizards. They have lizards over here that are from this size to literally like this size. It's something that looks like the, the what do they call it, the Komodo dragon. Uh, Komodo, I think that's the name of it, Komodo dragon. But it's, it's sort of an ancestor of that from what I've heard. And we have something over here called the Balawan. Balawan, I think that's the name of it too in Tagalog. It's the monitor, the monitor lizard. And it's huge. Uh, it's huge. And sometimes when they're like this long, they find a way into your house. Case in point, uh, Ness screamed, uh, and I thought she was joking. She said, there is a dragon in the shower. And I thought that was fun. This is hilarious. What is she talking about? There's a dragon in the shower. So anyway, I went inside. After I sat down and I chuckled for a while, not taking it seriously, uh, I, I, I took on a sense of seriousness when her screaming started getting louder and faster. I'm like, oh, maybe I better check on this. So I went into our comfort room, our bathroom on the first floor, and inside the shower, there was this. <laughs> now this, uh, I, I found this inside the shower, so she was right, there, there was a dragon a dragon, a uh, monitor lizard basically inside there. It's huge. Now you have to be very careful. Uh, but before I tell you why you got to be careful, uh, I had to find an approach to capture this and get it out of the house. So my recommendation is every house have that those sticky boards. They have these sticky boards you can buy over here that's normally used to catch mice and rats inside your house. You can put it in your attic. Uh, any place you think a m mouse a mouse or a rat can get inside your house or there's evidence there's some droppings there or some holes inside your screens uh, you should put these things down but they're also good to keep in your arsenal of varmint weapon toolbox inside your house you should keep these inside your house uh, in the event that you have this now you do not want to capture this lizard this monitor lizard you do not want to capture this with your hands uh, because they bite they will bite you, and if they bite you, they're poisonous in a manner that they're not like venomous kind of a poison, 
but they have so many known bacterial uh, things inside their mouth on their teeth uh, that you are extremely prone to infection from these animals. Uh, they're not really so scared of you either. Most lizards will run away from you really quick, but they do not. They see you and they will challenge you. They might not lunge at you, they might lunge at you. Uh, this one didn't have an opportunity to lunge at me uh, because I closed the door of the shower before he could get to me. Uh, but this is the second one that we've captured inside our house here. Uh, I know where he's coming in. Uh, we have a hole in our screen in our generator room. And when we open up our generator door during generator events to allow fresh air to go through there, uh, it gives them an opportunity to get in other parts of the house. So anyway, you need to be careful about things like that. There were several, oh, snakes. I don't know if I have a picture. I hope I have a picture somewhere on my phone. Uh, but they have this kind of snake, and I'm hoping I'm pointing to a picture somewhere uh, inside the Philippines. Now, uh, we've already had three of these this year inside our yard. Uh, I don't know if this is a venomous snake, I don't, but I, I do know that it is not scared of you. When you approach it, it will approach you. And that's what this snake did uh, to both me and to my gardener. Uh, so you have to be very careful about snakes. Now there are other snakes inside the Philippines as well. There are some huge snakes. There are some snakes that are like this big around <laughs> that, that, that will stem the entire length of a two car street where its head is totally on the sidewalk of one side and its tail is still in the yard on the opposite side. I don't know, I don't know if these are boas. I, I don't know what these are, but they're huge. So, so there are there are things over here that you have to be aware of. Uh, again, you know, that's part of nature. There are things are around the world. You just have to kind of be careful. So I talked about ants. I talked about the mono lizard. I talked about snakes. Uh, I talked about mosquitoes. Uh, and I, I'm sure I'm sure I missed something because I didn't categorize it on my little note here. Well, let me see if that's really. I, I, this turned into a really long Bahia Kubo session here. Uh, I, I don't uh, I don't want to go much longer. Now I, I think I covered several of those. And what I'll do in upcoming episodes, I'll try to make these smaller and uh, try to bring to the table here in the Bahikubo a lot of the questions that are common questions that people are asking all the time. So anyway, uh, if you have a comment or an email, say hey on your next Bahikubo time, can you bring this subject up and maybe I'll get to that as well. Uh, anyway, that's it for today here at the uh, by Google time. I think we have a birthday shout out. I need to go inside. I need to get with Ness uh, so that we can uh, say hi and do a birthday shout out to our birthday recipient. Well, anyway, it is not a birthday shout out. It's a anniversary shout out. It's a belated anniversary shout out and we're going to get this in. Uh, we haven't had a video in the last five days. So that's why it's belated. Uh, but it's for... <laughs> <laughs> it's for May. It's for May 27th, and it's for one of our subscribers uh, and his Asawa. Uh, it goes out from Ellie uh, Bushler, uh, and it goes out to his wife Anne Anne Bushler, who are from Pampanga, from Pampanga, uh, and they're again they're celebrating their third or had they celebrated their third anniversary. And I hope they were able to do it okay because they're kind of in one of those. Uh, MECQ, the, the enhanced, it's a weird enhanced type of a quarantine up there where we're at. Well, they are in the process of building from what I understand, uh, but their building is on hold because of the quarantine that's where, going to Where did Ellie come from? Uh, oh, Ellie. Ellie is from the UK. The Ellie is, he is originally from the UK. Uh, so anyway, uh, I, let me see. Let me look real quick. Is there anything else on your little note that they have for... Uh, uh, he said he's originally from the UK and he's retired now here in the Philippines. Uh, so anyway, we want to wish both Ellie and uh, Anne a belated happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. Well, anyway, I think that's enough for today. We're going to close. Today's episode actually went a lot longer than I was anticipating. I thought it was going to be a very short bike of time. It always does. It always does. <laughs> She knows, she knows. <laughs> so anyway, I hope you enjoyed today's episode and I hope it was a distractor from a lot of the things that are going on around the world today. Sometimes we need a little bit of a distraction. Uh, again, uh, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I hope you found it informative. If you did, please give us a thumbs up. Please share and if you have not subscribed, just click on that little My PI Dream Heart in the bottom right hand side of your screen. Is it there? Yeah. yeah, okay. And you'll be subscribed and notified the next time we upload a new video. So until such time, you have a wonderful and blessed day.
If you enjoyed today's episode and you would like to see more just like these, just click on one of the helpful links over to your right and you might be able to pick up on some good information on DIY projects, how to, or if you are interested in moving to the Philippines and building, you'll find answers there as well.